Breaking news, The Boys Season 3 is over, and we're here to talk about it. This is Sean. This is Chris. Uh, this is part two of our discussion about Season 3 of The Boys. Uh, if you didn't check it out last time, last time we were together in the same room right behind you. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a little different. We're not we're not accustomed to that, so that was a little a little awkward at times. There's, there's uh, folding chairs really hurt. If you... <laughs> yeah, we, what did we talk about? Maybe the first uh, four or five episodes of The Boys. Yeah. And that was uh, pretty much halfway through the season. Now the boys is, is over. Episode eight premiered this week. Um, we are Dad and Rock. If you guys don't know, we talk about after shows. We do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ted Lasso was a big one for us. I don't know if you guys are a Ted Lasso fan. Season three and the uh, season three and the final season of Ted Lasso is coming out in a few months. Uh, we've got a TikTok channel, which uh, you don't see on here, but just search Dad and Rock on TikTok. Chris has been putting a bunch of stuff up there. A lot of stuff going out over there. Uh, a lot of new subscribers from TikTok, too. So welcome, welcome. Yeah, welcome. And if you haven't already, hit that like sub button. Hit that, uh, you know, subscribe button. Comment. We're live. We're interactive. If you're watching live with us, if not, go ahead and put some comments under below. And uh, we'll, you know, interact with you there as well. But uh, let, let's just dive. Let, so, hell, let's dive into this. First and foremost, let's just get a broad feeling of the season as a whole. What, what did you think of this season compared to past the past two? Um, it, it was probably my favorite season so far because I think, um, the first season did a lot of good work as far as introducing us to the world and these characters. And, um, you know, I had to do a lot of heavy lifting and it did it in a, in a big, bad way. Like it was very good season one. Um, and season two was okay. I, I can't really tell you off. I guess. Oh, this was a lot of like Stormfront and stuff. Yeah, it was a Stormfront thing. It was the, yeah. uh, the Nazi background sucking in Homelander. Yeah, oh, that whole, that whole storyline. That was good. I mean, that was OK. But I think this one was uh, top notch. This was an excellent season. Yeah, this was my favorite season of all of them because we got a lot of moments in this season where it's like you even I think in very small portions, you sympathized with every character on the show. Yeah. And I mean, that's including Homelander. And uh, he's, right. And he's not a simple, you know, a symptomatic or, a, you know, someone we should feel bad for in any way. He is a complete douchebag. Let's, let's call it what it is. Yeah. It's funny you say that because after this season, I was thinking in my head, like, what would I say to Homelander to, like, not immediately be lasered in the face? Like, could I be able to talk to that guy in a certain way, uh, coming from a place of being like, hey, you had a like a crappy childhood and i don't know it's like he's such a wild card he could either listen to you and be calm with you or just like depending on his mood just you know like i said laser you in the face <laughs> yeah i mean you i even felt bad for a character that i could not stand this whole season and it's ashley in this final episode when he he makes her pull off that wig and she's standing there Right. There's that simple. Yeah, you feel bad for her too. Yeah. So I mean, that is something that this show does better than I think any other show that I, I've seen in a while, where you just hate a character. Yeah. But there's instances where you can feel bad for that character as well. And I think I mentioned this last time that we talked about the boys, but I'm always surprised, and I don't know why at this point we're three seasons in. But I'm like, oh, I always forget how good of a storytelling uh, device this is. As far as like the writing, the scenes, the character arcs, the like the setting of plot, like it's so it's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is too. Real quick, hey Jason, thanks for you. Know, thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Hey Jason, what's up? We're talking about the boys, season three. But yeah, I mean it's. Well, let's just kind of get into it. I mean, each each character had its own arc. Yeah, like yeah. you had both Huey, and this was something that I, I pointed out at the uh, end of our discussion last time, which I wasn't a big fan of. Huey and Butch are actually taking this temp fee and making themselves kind of soups in a way. Yeah, and you didn't care for that at the time. Ha I'd, has your thoughts changed now that we've seen kind of the arc of that? Not really. No, I still really didn't like. I like the way it ended. With Huey and Starlight, yeah, how like well, I mean, even Butcher went out of his way basically to, to save Huey without telling him not to take it again, right. knowing what Huey's response was going to be when he punched him in the face and left him in you know the bathroom and took off. It was kind of his way of saying you're you're not taking any more of this stuff with me. We're we're flying. I'm flying solo now with Soldier Boy. Yeah, I know what the, if I die, it's one thing. I am not letting you die. 
Yeah, and that was the direction. See, at first when Starlight called him on the phone and he just kind of hung up on her and didn't tell Huey immediately about the after effects or the side effects of this 24-hour V, I thought maybe he was doing that because he wanted Huey by his side. But after this incident where he knocks Huey out, I, I think he knew that if he would have told Huey, you know, just telling him like, hey, you know, you can't take any more of this and you, you got to stop the mission, go back to Starlight. There's a big chance he wouldn't have done it. And he still would. Oh, no, he's already done it Butcher. against uh, you know, Butcher's will already. Yeah. I mean, going into Herogasm. So we've already seen him not listen. So Butcher knew no matter what he told Huey, Huey's going to do his own thing. And I, I just loved the storyline with with actual butcher himself because you've seen the backstory you've seen him and his brother you've seen all that when basically when uh he was put into that dream state but that one soup that he was basically trapped in that nightmare of what happened in the past yeah uh, that that right there was so much character you know just development with butcher in that one episode because we knew butcher and we knew something happened with his brother we knew he didn't like his dad so all of that took place and now we actually had context. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. Just like uh, I mentioned the story arcs, but just like each and every character had a big full story arc this season. I mean, everybody from like Kamiko all the way up to uh, Maeve and like Homelander himself. Soldier Boy, the introduction of Soldier Boy. Uh, by the time that you and I talked mid season, we hadn't had a lot of Soldier Boy just yet. I think they just it, freedom basically from yeah, yeah. Russian imprisonment. What do you think about the actual character Soldier Boy and in in that arc, half uh, the second half of the season? I enjoyed that. I really did. Cause he was going after everyone that betrayed him. And then there was that that bombshell that was dropped on him. <laughs> the dad and Rock Mug. I like it. That bombshell was dropped on him that he was actually Homelander's dad. And they were getting him out of the way so Homelander can take over. So all of a sudden he had that that dilemma. You know, what do I do? Do I kill my son? You you seen him at, like going through it at one point. And I, I just I like that whole twist. I like, you know, we could be a family when it was with uh, Homelander, uh, his son, I uh, can't Ryan, I think it is. And then, you know, Soldier Boy. But I also love the fact that just like at the end of last season, Stormfront wasn't dead. Now, we know she's dead now. But Soldier Boy it was just put back on ice. So th there is an, a, a possibility that he could get free again. So he can get out again. And, you know, who knows what kind of storyline they can run with that. Do they ever go into, I forget now, did they ever go into who Homelander's mother was? It wasn't Stormfront, was it? No, 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 I, I no, I don't think so. And it wasn't, was it, it wasn't Elizabeth Shue's character, right? They, they really didn't get into it. Yeah, there they, was a weird dynamic there that was all the way back at season one which feels like forever ago now <laughs> um so yeah i clearly can't remember but that reveal of you know jensen ackles um you know captain america ripoff character being the the father of uh homelander that was like a big reveal that was a you know i am your father <laughs> kind of yeah reveal. yeah well yeah. it was one of those like oh jesus where is this going now like because he was hunting down his team and then the deal was he would kill Homelander or do his best to kill Homelander. Right. Now we're like going into that final scene. I'm like, oh, God, where is this going? Is Butcher now truly screwed? Well, you and I had fears about this. We talked a little bit about this on our last show. We were like, I'm, what would it look like if Homelander and uh, Soldier Boy, they seem to be, you know, two of the same coin here. Like, and this is before we even knew they were, you know, directly related. Uh, but they both seemed like complete, you know, jackasses, like to the point of like they could I, if they were working together, it would be hard for anyone to stop them. Honestly, um, if they were both on the same same side of things. Um, well, so that was uh, insane the way that they were uh, kind of portrayed like that, because we had a bad feeling like we, you and I were discussing, like, what if that even happened? I don't know if anybody could stop them. Yeah, no, that would that would be definitely if, if basically Ryan Homelander. And uh, soldier all teamed up together. Yeah, that that would be an unstoppable force. There'd be no way was, to, to basically. It's close to happening too. Yeah, it was too. I mean, no, that let, one let's, scene. Let's talk noir. Homelander taking out Black Noir. Oh yeah, I was devastated when that happened because I, I, as twisted and as weird 
as it was when he was sitting down in that like little restaurant and he had these little cartoon characters coming up. Right. And then you learned the background, but yeah, between him and soldier boy. And then just, a, it, it was trippy as hell. I mean, I couldn't, that was weird. But when he fessed up and told Homelander that he knew that soldier boy was his dad, it was over. Yeah, it was a good storytelling device, though, too. Like, we've got a lot. So far, we've gotten barely any. We've had little scenes of Black Noir, like little character beats. Like, he, we, haven't, we haven't heard a word of dialogue besides those flashbacks this season. Yeah. Um, but it's like this season, we really learned who this guy was without the mask. He was on this team in the past. Um, they had that. Uh, basically, he was the one that really take the initiative to put Soldier Boy on ice. Yeah. Um, hop on the new team. Homelander trusted him like above all else. He even says after he kills him after the fact, he's like, you know, so, um, Black Noir was worth more than ten times the three of you put together or whatever. Like, yeah, um, you know, I have no family I, now. I don't need any of you. Like, even he, even though he just murdered Black Noir, he felt this was the first time he actually actually felt bad about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was that little bit of you know, the reg- almost almost regret. Yeah, that you heard in his voice. Yeah, but since he lied to him, he couldn't trust him. I, that was just it's devastating, really. And I did love the whole like Chuck E. Cheese ripoff of him, like because this guy is traumatized. He's he's got the mind of a child, probably from the injuries he sustained from the incident with Soldier Boy. Right, half his yeah. brain was smushed. Um, so he's got kind of a childlike mentality, which is just so like funny it's juxtaposed against how violent and brutal the character actually is it reminds me of that that one scene at the beginning of last season where he's um basically doing that assassination uh overseas and like he like cuts some guy's head off and he's like carrying it but he also passes like a kid in their bedroom and he has the little stuffed bunny and he's just like you know (laughs) trying to like (laughs) interact with the kid i actually forgot about that scene i remember the scene where you know the whole area blowing up and him just kind of walking through it or like a big deal which makes me really want to think like if he can walk through an explosion why was it so easy for homelander to basically just grab it whatever organ he grabbed and yanked it out that is a question that I had. Now, the way they shot it, it looked pretty final. I mean, and the fact that they had that after. I think it would have been left up to a mystery if we didn't have that after shot of him talking to the cartoon characters again. And yeah. kind of like receding back and fading away. That tells me that he's dead, dead. Um, the only way that maybe, and then Jason kind of mentions it here, that he's supposed to be coming back next season, apparently. Uh, maybe something that Jason had seen. Uh, but the only way I see them doing that is if it's somebody else underneath the mask, honestly. Yeah, that, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a stretch. I'm not sure how exactly they would pull that off enough for me to go ahead and buy it. Yeah, because that scene with the cartoon characters like sheepishly kind of like disappearing and fading away was it was really well done. It was really kind of that was really kind of driving home like, oh, no, he's done. He's done for. <laughs> but it's also one of those things because we mentioned this before. Is this the same black noir? that's been in this costume i think we're meant to understand that it was because um how would he know about the very detailed way yeah with soldier boy okay yeah no in nicaragua now i mean he learned about it through basically he pushed it down because of trauma but the cartoon characters were just bringing up his actual memories in a form of a play that he could sit and watch um but uh yeah that's how i bought it is that he was kind of the the instigator uh, or the driver because him force. and soldier boy never got along it looks like those two were always at odds no and it looks like it came to head in an argument and during that argument is when he actually got injured now in the flashbacks that we actually saw he got injured from an explosion um so the story is a little muddled though because like there's a part where he got in a fight there's a cartoon character and he gets the the, the sheep or whatever the black sheep yeah 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 gets pushed down the eagle soldier boy and you could see like his brain kind of popping out i don't know if we're meant to think that that happened from soldier boy doing that in an argument or what we actually saw with our own eyes the live action recreation they did when they got all messed up was during what happened nicaragua yeah so it is a little it is a little hazy as far as what really happened there yeah I, yeah i don't know well i guess we'll exactly find out exactly what's going through but uh yeah I, that was that was disappointing to see actual you know noir done that way because we were we were meant to believe that he was such a badass mm-hmm. from the get-go the, the silence all of it and then, my only thing is this is a pretty full cast as is like i don't 
you know, it, a show that, you know, can kill a character and then resurrect a character, if they do it well, it's okay. I can forgive it. But it's become some so much of a trope these days, I think. Yeah. Like Game of Thrones did it like two or three times. And like even Stranger Things has, has done it kind of to a point. And it's just like, I just want deaths to be real. And so far in the boys, that's that's have everything death. has seemed to be real. Yeah. 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 Now, let, let's talk about deaths. Let's kind of jump to that scene towards the end with Maeve. Because, dude, I think Maeve was stronger than this show was ever truly letting on. Yeah, she couldn't fly. But, dude, she took Homelander and gave him everything he could handle. Now, yeah, she lost an eye. Let's be straight. I mean, he, he but all it did was piss her off even more. <laughs> and she made him, I mean, a little bleed. And she didn't make him a little bleed. Yeah. She didn't do like the whole, you know, the Thanos thing, all that for a little blood. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> she really was whooping his ass. Well, and the simple fact that she um, took out Soldier Boy's, you know, that huge radiation explosion he's been doing a couple times this season. She was there to bear the brunt of it in midair. Like, she was the only one. And yeah. she ended up surviving that and, you know, falling and still, you know, being able to recuperate. Yeah, it was, um, it was just like what happened to... Uh, to Kamiko earlier. Kamiko, yeah. Basically, yeah. it took her power. He doesn't absorb their, absorb their powers. It basically fries the V in their blood. Right. And they become, you know, average people again. Yeah. Or average for the first time. Uh, I did like Maeve's arc, though. I think um, she's another character that I actually prefer would not to see because she's able to ride off into the sunset. Um, you know, the, the general public thinks she's di she died. They're all mourning her as a hero. There's banners of her up in the city. And she's able to kind of sneak away and slink away with her, you know, her partner and live, uh, hopefully live happily ever after. Like, that's I a nice fitting ending. I don't think we're done with her. No. Probably not. And the only thing that I would say, I, maybe we get a short scene of Homelander actually finding them both and killing them once and for all. And we actually, because this is the boys after all. So I don't know if people are allowed to have happy endings. Yeah, true. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if she'll come back next year. I don't, who knows? It seemed very final though. Hey guys, if you're watching us now and you are watching us on YouTube, our place of choice, uh, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, drop comments. We are live, and we got Jason here watching us currently. He's uh, he's commenting along the way. I would love if you guys join us as well. Uh, if you're not watching live, just drop comments in below, and uh, we'll go ahead and respond to them as well. Uh, but uh, let, let's keep this train moving, uh, dude. The train. The train. The, the, the A train. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, dude? Uh, he's another one that there is. He has been such an ass to, the entirety of the show. Yeah. And after was it a uh, hero gasm? You you kind of start feeling bad for him. He apologized to Huey. Yeah. He now has this heart from this racist that he wanted people he didn't want to kill, but you know vengeance got a hold of him. And his brother was paralyzed. His whole arc this season has been really good for that character, I think, because he's totally unsympathetic when it comes to that first season. He's the one who runs right through Robin unap unapologetically. He's just doped up on the V or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And he's just like, you just, this guy is a total asshole, like co totally unredeemable. He's just he like, sells out that one uh, super that won their, their, their game show and Homelander yeah. killed him. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and throughout the season, I started to feel bad for him because I mean, you can, it's just when you feeling bad for him when he, yeah, Jason's a screw a trade. Um, his world is shook, right? I mean, he's used to the endorsements, the money, and he has yeah. all that taken away. He has to go back to where he can't, he probably, nobody's an asshole their entire lives. I'm sorry. It's just, it develops over time. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, this guy was probably a good guy with his family, the kind of guy that his brother remembers when they were yeah. first officially training, right? Then he, he probably spent too much time with Homelander. Yeah, he spent too much time. He's, you know, that's what the thing about this show is a lot of these awful people are, some of them are awful just because they were born that way and they have these awful tendencies and they're just awful people. But a lot of them you get to see like, well, they're kind of awful because of the circumstances they're in. They live an awful life. They are forced to make awful choices because they are in fear or, you know, there's some there's something else going on. There's something yeah. bigger than what we see. Right. Unless you're the deep. The deep's just a dick. Yeah. The deep. Look, there, yeah. There's no saving the deep. There's the no redeemable qualities in the deep. 
<laughs> yeah. But I feel like they did a lot of work with a train, especially this final scene in this final episode where he's trying to make amends with his brother and his brother wants nothing to do with him. Oh, then when he found out he murdered him. Yeah. He doesn't he even know he has his heart. Yeah. Yeah. He knows he murdered him and he kicked him out, you know, just based on, I don't want to murder in my house. And you've seen how deep that hit. And this was after the scene that um, that Homelander says, you know, none of you are my family. I don't need any of you. Adrian doesn't have anybody at this point. No, I mean, not in the tower or outside the tower. He's he's a man on him like on his own. So I Is am there interested to be a to redemption arc for him. I don't know. I think they're working their way towards it. If if it was any sooner than this, as far as him like teaming up with Star, I wouldn't have bought it because it's it was just like it, we saw we even saw it earlier in this season. Like there was a point where he could have turned on Homelander um, with that yeah. guy that you mentioned earlier, uh, Starlight's old friend, right? Next Street Boy, dude. Yeah, but he just narked. He just told Homelander all about it, and yep. we we're just like, yeah, that's typical. That seems like a train. But they did a lot of work after that. Even, But even at that point, it was kind of teeter-tottering. Like, I don't know, Adrian's been through some stuff. Maybe he might go along, but he didn't. Um, so if if they have a, an arc next season where he actually does some good, kind of like how Maeve, you know, finally broke and she was like, okay, yeah. well, let me, instead of doing the selfish thing right in this moment, let me actually do the heroic thing for once. I think she was on that arc from the minute episode, season one, the yeah. plane episode. Oh her, yeah, her sure. arc started where we finished now at that point, and it went that two and a half seasons to get to where we are now. Yeah, and essentially now she's got everything she wants, right? As a character, like she doesn't have her powers anymore. Um, she was kind of in the same way that Kamiko was. It's like I don't want these powers; they're a curse more than anything. How well, you bring up Kamiko? What yeah. do you think of her taking the shot of V to get back to where she was? I felt a little weird about that because I was just like, you just had all this time, all the season saying how you wanted to give up, give up your powers. And within an episode, she was already like, give me that compound V because, I, you know, and she kind of like put a lampshade on it. Like, well, now I want it to be my choice and I want to be able to protect my love and that stuff. And I get that. I buy it. But it was kind of a swift character turn. I, I, I think it. Well, I, I don't I'll, I'll, I'll give you the OK. It was a little little quick. Yeah. But based on what they went through with little Nina, I can I will almost buy it. Yeah. On how quickly because she went from being able to basically run through walls and not not bother at all. Right. And then she was just beaten down to the point where she couldn't do anything. So I, I like the fact that she went ahead and, and took it and brought you know brought that back so she can actually help. And putting on that um uh, I was it a, she's a maniac or I'm <laughs> yeah, not sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, While she that. was in that uh that that drug lord dancing and often guys, uh that that was great. I enjoyed that. Yeah, she, well she was embracing it. Like she had that scene earlier where she was doing kind of the musical with Frenchie and she was like loving the fact that she didn't have her powers anymore. And this time she was almost like doing it like embracing that she did have powers and she was like at full power, like just taking dudes out vicious. Like Kamiko is one of my as far as seeing her powers in action. Like, you know, it's fun, like laser vision. OK, you know, flight. That's so cool. Special effects. But actually watching Kamiko take dudes down is like fun. It's just yeah. fun to watch. <laughs> but I, I do want to flash back to something as well. So we seen Kamiko, the blue vial, take the V back. Mm -hmm. The minute I seen the vial. I flipped back to the senator's daughter. Right. Yeah. She that shot scene. her up with V. And it That's wasn't what, temporary. It was like full. Yeah, because the yeah, temporary the was a little vial of green. Right, she right. gave her the full fledged stuff. The blue. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's that, well, let's use their word diabolical. <laughs> right. I mean, that's really what it was. You really think of what she did to her. Um, She did. But honestly, like, I don't know. She's she's scared. Right. I mean, she's in this world of power in in not only her own superpowers popping heads, but in the world of like the U S government and trying to, you know, she's surrounded. She'd already been threatened by Homelander once, I think by yeah. that point. So it's like, what can you do to protect the ones you love? If, if your powers and you being a superpower, it isn't enough. Then it's like, you know, what if I can just give my action, give my kid the superpowers. It's gotta be tough. It's not like, because nobody likes having these things. It seems like, cause it just puts you in this world of danger constantly. Yeah, it um, does. so it's like almost it's either a blessing or a curse for her own daughter, but she she airs on the side of, of doing it to try to protect her, I guess. 
Oh yeah, that was the first thing that came to mind for me. I was like, man, yeah, that is awful. Like, I I couldn't imagine you know doing that to my child. I really couldn't. Yeah, Jason brings up the fact you think they will kill off Butcher, or there will be some kind of miracle that keeps him around. So, um, you want to talk about another one? Yeah, Yeah, we didn't talk talk about about that. There's so there's the compound V, the 24 hour kind, the the temporary kind that Huey and uh, Butcher were taking all this season. Uh, They had like you know two or three doses, and then Starlight learns that you know after the fourth or fifth dose, like it's fatal. You're done. Yeah. Um, I don't even think it's that far. I think it was three or four where it starts giving the lesions in the brain because Butcher started bleeding from his ear. Yeah, Huey Huey did did too. too. Yeah. Um, And Huey decides to take it once more for this fight. And, you know, he gets some terminal, you know, fatal news from the hospital at the end of this episode that he's got, what, 18 months at most to live? Yeah. Um, Not Huey, Butcher. Yeah, Butcher. That's what I meant. So um, do you think that the way I read that scene is that Butcher is like, okay, well, that means I've got 18 months to finish my mission. Or do you think that Butcher is going to, like, finally take the permanent stuff, take, like, the permanent compound V? Oh, he's. I think he's going permanent. Yeah, I because I, it's hard telling if this show could survive without him because I think it could. I honestly yeah. believe that this show would be able to survive without Billy Butcher because there's like there's so many actual components to it, and he has brought along Huey to the point where Huey and uh, MM could carry the group. But when Butcher walks into that room, it's a whole different feeling. He carries that room. He does. And even just be Carl Urban being Carl Urban is a yeah. big, big draw for the show. I mean, he's on the poster and everything. Um, yeah, I can see the boys going on. I don't really, you know, I think they would want to keep him around as long as possible, though. I know the boys, the actual comic series, like Butcher's there until the end. It is finite. It's not like it's still going like the boys is a certain series or number of books. Um, but uh, yeah, I can see that maybe I, who's to say how many seasons have le- are left of this thing. Like, I, I don't think they've announced anything as far as, like, season four being the last, but we could only maybe see this thing going, like, five seasons. Um, a lot of these, a lot of the shows like this, they don't like to go beyond, you know, what stretches the, the story arc. Because it's the same fate that happened to, like, The Walking Dead. You know what I mean? Like, um, at some point, there's just too much, too many. And, you know, you, you kind of want, I think the audiences almost expect, like, you know, give give me five, six seasons and an end of a story and uh, call it a day before you start to get to be an awful show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, it's the same. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll come. I'll bring Ted Lasso into it. I'd rather the three story and three season story arc mm-hmm. than driving into the ground. So uh, would I like it to end with me wanting more? Probably. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'd want it to be. Will Butcher go anywhere now? I think Butcher's, like you said, just like the comic. I mean, they deviate from the comic a little bit, I've heard, because, I mean, I haven't jumped into it because I don't want it now. I don't want to know anything. Right. I want the show to give me, you know, my first actual interaction with the uh, with this world. Yeah. So, but if he's there. I can tell you the, the show is making a lot of changes from the book. Yeah, I know I learned a little bit about the Black Noir stuff and the Black Noir stuff and the, the show is totally different from what it was in the books. Um, the Soldier Boy stuff, totally different from what it was in the books, um, which I actually think that the show's a bit better. I think they're, you know, that's tough to say because I didn't read the books initially, but so far I think the changes have been appropriate and good and like it still is making for a really good show. So, um, so yeah, there, there are big differences between the two. Butcher's gonna be there if it's if it's V or if if the remaining storyline of this show it's just within is, that eighteen months is yeah. that eighteen month period of time that's what I was thinking I'm good with that too right if that if that's how they want to play it out and that's how they were laying the end of the season out I'm good with going that route yeah. uh, dude but there was one scene actually I'm, I'm gonna say two scenes in this episode it was between uh, Frenchie and MM mm-hmm. how MM was telling. French, uh, French was telling MM, just let his daughter see it all. The good, the bad, mm, yeah. all of it. You be you with your daughter. You let her know who you are. Because basically, he was telling him how he is the best person that French has ever encountered. Yeah, yes, you're right on. Yeah, essentially, French tells him, like, despite all your flaws that you see in yourself, you're still the best man that I know. So it's yeah. like, just let her know that person, and you'll and, be and, just fine. And it, and it harkens back to what... Uh, 
uh, Butcher told him, you know, yeah. the reason I brought you on here is because everyone to a man said you were the one holding up that platoon together. Even Starlight this season, because Starlight, they were because the boys were divided, right? It was Huey and Butchie, <laughs> Huey and Butchie, <laughs> Huey and Butcher on one side, you know, with Soldier Boy doing their thing. And then Starlight had to rely on M.M. and Frenchie and the, the other half of the boys. And there was a lot of times where Starlight looked at uh, M.M., even, well, like post-Herogasm, um, right? Yeah. When there were all those people injured outside that mansion, she looks at M.M. and she's like, help me, because I know you will. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. know you're a good man. And I'm, Well, she I'm told him, don't go fight him. That's suicide. Come with me. Help me yeah. save people. Right. So, I mean, there's been many of instances where all the main characters are telling him, you are the glue, right? You are what holds this team together. Even when he made that comment during this season that there was no team to hold together anymore, when he was pissed off that, you know, both Huey and Butcher were taking temp fee. Yeah. He stuck around. He still held that team. Even when they were, they were fractured at one point, everyone was their own way. Yeah. In this, in this season. And then he was able to, they all came back together and it was basically him that was, that was driving that ship. And there's and, only a few times that you see Butcher shook. And one of them is when Huey reminds him of Lenny. It kind of shakes him a bit. And other times is when M.M. feels disappointed in him. It's, yeah. It, it kind of shakes him. <laughs> Dude, Every but, other time, Butcher is like a 10 out of 10. But there this, are a few I mean, times where he's shook. This show hasn't made me emotional in any scene besides one. And that was his finale. It was when M.M. was sitting with his daughter. Right. And he was telling her about him about his grandfather about the past right about why the way he is mm -hmm. and when his daughter accepted that i mean I, I'll, I'll be the first to say you know it, it got me it just oh, i mean yeah. and, and it's because i mean I, I know it's because i have kids and i have a daughter yeah we're uh it's just like a shortcut for us so it it was immediate it immediately pulled at that heart those heartstrings and i love the fact that that happened now, i'm curious to see how the dynamic is going to be with her stepfather going forward because there's something you know at the end of this i have show. a feeling that he was kicked out of the house after that because she even though she was mad at eminem for punching todd i yeah. think she was all also really upset that todd took her to that rally that homelander rally so i have a feeling that todd may not be around <laughs> that household anymore but there was a character beat in that scene that you mentioned that i also thought was like just excellent writing and excellent character beat was just like when he was pointing out his um, his father in that photo book, he had that nervous tick where his finger was going. Oh, he was and tapping like, on. He caught that too. Yeah, he was. Yeah, the same thing that's been going on with him, you know, and his um, his struggles with that. And his daughter like reaches out and like steadies his hand, holds his hand, and it was just like such like a great ending to that scene and just a like a, a character beat to end on because his mm's journey throughout the season too it's that's what's amazing like we just go keep going character to character and each one of these characters this season gets like a strong arc from beginning to end oh, yeah and it's amazing that they do because like you said in the beginning there's so many of them yeah and they all had such i mean even the deep himself who had a, a much smaller arc but you've seen basically from where he was last season to where he is now, where he got, you know, into that like cult type church. Right. And they kind of got him back into, you know, the seven. But at the end of it, he basically actually finally makes a decision for himself. And now it may be way too, it's, it's way too late for him. Right. But he made a decision for himself that he can say it was his decision and nobody else's. Yeah, and he ends his season what in his in his you know his chambers with the, the the aquariums and stuff alone because his girlfriend of this or fiance of this entire season finally broke up broke things off with him. I think I he guess. did. Oh, did he really? I, See, I, I thought if she I did. understand right. He's the one that said this is done. This is done. This is over. Because it was after that weird bed scene. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The octopus and everything, and she didn't want to play along and. See, yeah, I thought made... she had walked out and she was done at that point. That's why she wrote the book and got money and stuff. Maybe that was her plan the whole time because it wasn't like a real relationship. Oh, yeah. No, no, it know? wasn't either. Um, but the fact that he still got the picture of him, like the painting hanging over his bed of him and Homelander together. I'm sorry. Uh, I had to laugh at this comment. Yep. <laughs> he has the octopus. Yeah, he's not alone. <laughs> yeah, he's got the whole aquarium. Oh, oh man. Okay, let's move on. Oh. I mean, there's nobody to stop him at this point. Just have your own little... Uh, Nothing like a little anyway. bit of tuna. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, I'm sorry. That didn't, isn't that isn't... wasn't that an arc last season though? Like him and a dolphin. He was trying to like say it's always been something. It, it's yeah, been, always yeah, been yeah. him and some something. Yeah, some type of fish. Right. Oh, oh Jesus. Anyway, the deep is gross and never change deep. You're the only one that's pretty consistent, <laughs> consistently deplorable. Man, but uh, but let, let's talk a little bit of Annie or or Starlight or however you. Yeah, want to call well, I guess Annie now, right? There is no more Starlight. Yeah, no, she ditched the Starlight, you know, you know name, but. She was, I love how they played the social media angle on this. Yeah. Because it's, it's relevant. Right. She went ahead. She, instead of releasing the video, which Homelander didn't care about, he was like, you know, I right. want to be loved, but I don't care about being hated. Yeah. It, we're being feared. Yeah. It or was a feared. big shift from last season where they really had that over his head, but he just totally like disintegrated that with that one sentence. Like you think you have that over me and you don't. <laughs> Yeah, he, Homelander was extra scary this season. Um, what I, I I'm reminded of what he told Maeve this episode. Like, you know, I'm not. Uh, what did he say? Like, I'm not keeping you alive. Or no, he said uh, I'm not saving you. or I'm keeping you alive. Something like that. Oh, like, his last episode was I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not keeping. Not saving you. I'm keeping you alive to harvest your eggs. Yeah, which was like, scary. Holy yeah. crap! Right. I mean, in today's it's world, twisted. you can actually write something like that in a TV show. Right. Holy God. <laughs> He like he's twisted and that there seems like that that make him like he's not coming back. He's not going to have like a heel turn or anything. You know what I mean? Like he's not coming be, back to be an actual good guy. It's funny how they played that dynamic. I'm kind of getting off the course here. But like there was that scene that he had with Ryan where he was actually giving him good fatherly talks. Like you think that was your fault? That wasn't your fault. Oh, no yeah. What, when he actually found them. Yeah. When. Yeah. And he really said what needed to be said. For two reasons, like that's what a father should be telling his son. Like he he was hitting the, the good beats there, but at the same time, it's like is he only saying this to get on Ryan's good side so Ryan yeah. goes with him? Like that's what you feel like is happening. But like, yeah, there's little glimmers like where Hopelander knows how to be a good person. Is he just like choosing not to be at well, every given it's moment? It's like when he was looking in the mirror. Yeah, and he That's was true. on one side. That basically the other persona of him was in the other one, yelling at him. It was they the Gollum Smeagol moment. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got split. Uh, he's got a split personality. Right, and there's a part of him that wants to be loved, and there's the other ones like, "Shut up, we're gonna yeah. do what I say, and I'm gonna get us through it." And he even said, "I said I want to be liked." Yeah, after basically saying he didn't care. Um, and then, yeah, he goes to, it was like, we saw the other side of his personality when he was with Maeve, who he feels really hurt by in his own way. He feel that Maeve was the one that hurt him, you yeah. know, even though Homelander is the one who's just psychotic. Um, but, uh, yeah, you're right. So anyway, I don't know how I got on a Homelander track, but just all the stuff that Homelander had this season too, was just like, dude, Homelander and his Ryan, when yeah. he came in at the end, mm -hmm. the, he, Ryan's gonna be an issue. Mm -hmm. I, I hope his name is Ryan. I, I think it is. It is. It's Ryan. Yeah. But uh, man, he, he's gonna be a problem. And the way that that one guy threw something at him, hit him. Yes. And Homelander just basically openly murdered this dude in plain day. And then the, and then Todd, Todd was there. He was like, yes. yeah. And he was cheering yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. He got the crowd going. Oh, then that that smile that Ryan gave at the end when it closed on. That was creepier than Homelander's smile. Because Homelander, you expect that from him. You're like, oh, yeah, he loves But it was a know. slow, bending smile. Yeah. yeah. It was one of those, I'll use the word again, diabolical. It was right. one of those type smiles. Yeah. So he's going to be an issue. I think he may become an issue that Homelander can't control. I don't know if it's going to be a next season thing or maybe like a final season, like end game. Because I don't think the show... I think once Homelander dies, I think that's the end of the show, honestly. I don't think you go beyond that. I think in this final season, you see maybe an end to Butcher and an end to Homelander. Because we've had three seasons thus far of Homelander being the big bad. It would feel really weird if, like, next season they finally kill Homelander and then they have two more seasons where it's something else that they're fighting. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that this, just this feel could be a storyline with Butcher and Homelander. Yeah. And, that, and I'm that trying could to think, be like, who ultimately would could kill now that kind of Maeve seems to be out of the picture. And I don't know if anybody could take on Homelander besides Ryan. And I almost think it would be like a struggle between Ryan's future, like the dark side or the light side kind of thing. Like ultimately what is Ryan going to do? Yeah. I I mean, I mean, it may come down to butcher taking V. Yeah. 
if he takes me and then he'll be on his own pretty much i don't think the boys would want any part of him if he took permanent v i gotta wonder where ryan's head is at too because that is the last scene that we get with him and he's still with homelander um he's still and he had that you know that brief smile or whatever so it's not like he's not with homelander anymore he even like um kind of takes homelander's hand at the end of the show and butcher is like pleading like you know ryan please you know stay with me kind of thing and he walks off with uh homelander but i didn't know in the moment i didn't know if he was walking off with homelander because he knows he's thinking like he knows how to handle homelander when everybody else doesn't or if he was really like no this is my dad and i love my real dad and i want to be with my real dad like i don't know what's going on in ryan's head i think like, ryan is is just as messed up in the head as homelander yeah. is I think there's, well, that's there's, that's a big statement because Homelander's pretty messed yeah, up in the I mean, head. I think he's because he's going through something similar, but not. You think about it because Homelander didn't have didn't know mom, dad didn't know any of that, and he was raised by this other guy yeah. in this mansion away from everything. So he Ryan's been raised by his mom, secluded from everything, and mm-hmm. kept away from everything. So the same seclusion took place this time. One of the parents were there until now. Um, was it Be- Becca? One of yeah. dead, and then who's being raised by, you know that uh, that other I can't think of her name off the top of my head. I it's either Madeline or something. Ed, yeah, I, I think it is. About. I think it is Madeline. Yeah, you know it, it, he was calling her Aunt Madeline. Yeah, to that point. So it, he's been juggled around. He's seen Homelander. He has seen Butcher, and Butcher went ahead and, in a weird, twisted kind of way, did the right thing. Right by pushing him away knowing that he didn't want to bring him into this situation and then he's seen stormfront and now he's back with homelander so his head there's no way he's got a a good compass of what's really going on here no and that's why i'm wondering if it's going to be a fight for his ultimate decision uh, you know towards the end of this thing and i think um it may be a, a, another reason why like you mentioned why butcher would ultimately take v so he can be on equal ground with ryan uh to be like you know pleading with them or uh, because it was you know when when shit was going down and homelander and Maeve were going off in this this final battle and soldier boy was about to explode one more time butcher was shielding ryan like there's no doubt about it and yeah Ryan has to like know that it's like, you know, love is not only through words, love is through action. You know what I mean? Like if if Butcher was, you know, ultimately hated this kid because he reminded him too, too much of Becca, then why the hell is he shielding him in his what could why be is he trying to protect moment? him? Yeah, right. Um, so, you know, ultimately, I think there's more. That's why that's what makes this, this finale so good. It's like this final climactic battle in Vault Tower was like really. Well, then there was Huey. <laughs> really good. There was yeah. Huey. I was like, don't do it, dude. Don't do it. He's holding that 10 feet and mm-hmm. he's holding it. And I'm like, if you go ahead and you take it, you are jeopardizing everything that you have been doing to get back good with Starlight or, or, or yeah. Annie. Yeah. And the minute he goes ahead and he starts jacking all the lights and everything up, I'm like, oh, he knows something. Yeah, yeah. And he powered her up to a point where I don't think she was aware no. that she can get to. Yeah. And she blasted the hell out of Soldier Boy. And it took a lot out of her because when she came down, like, I didn't know she could fly. I don't think she knew she could fly. No, uh, Maeve even said so. Like, you know, I may be powerful. I can jump, but you can fly. Like, that was a new thing for both of them. Yeah. And it could be her. Mm -hmm. It could be her that actually taps into a potential that she never knew she had. Right. That will go toe to toe with Homelander. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but they are kind of leading that way in this. I loved um, Huey turning up those lights. It was kind of a uh, shorthand of what's happened this entire season because he's had this insecurity about not having powers, not being able to op- open the pickle jar. Right. Mm-hmm, kind of yeah. like, how can I be a real man for this woman? Like, I love this woman, but I can't really be who I am believe i should be a provider and like the man in this relationship you know when she's so super powerful or whatever and he's had all these insecurities about that this entire time and all she's she's even told him flat out like i don't need you for that yeah <laughs> i and need she you thought he was okay with that from the get-go right like i just need you to be here for me so we can like chill and watch netflix and i can like recharge my batteries and be a human being for the love of god and like that's what she needs right I mean, that's so, a Netflix and chill right there. Exactly. Ooh, like, yeah, it's yeah. a winner. 
<laughs> so like, but that's been a short, and this was like, like almost a, a scene of that, that dynamic. Like, I'm not going to take the V and be super powered. I'm making the choice to like, put all that energy to her. So yeah. she can be the best that she can be. I'm using my wits and everything to get to where I'm going. Yeah. Whoops. Got his octopus. There you go. Jason didn't think of that soldier boy. Uh, Jason thinks soldier boy is going to be back. What do you think about that? I think he will. We're not done with soldier boy. And, and the reason I, I agree with Jason there is I have a really sinking suspicion that we're going to see Stan Egger. He's coming back. Stan Egger is yeah. not gone. Uh, yeah. So he's going to come back because so, I mean, uh, Homelander isn't going to be able to run the uh, vault anymore. After what's all going on, there's no way he's going to be able to run it. They're going to uh-huh. bring him back, and he's going to be running vault again. And in the, my, in the meantime, he's going to find out where they're keeping Soldier Boy. Mm. And he's going to bring Soldier Boy back out, and he's going to put him into seven. Oh, interesting. Oh. So, I think, so I think Soldier Boy and Homelander are going to sit at the same table up on the... the Whatever floor that is. Yeah, the 88th floor or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, which uh, Jason responds to uh, Homelander is going to lose his shit. I think so. Yeah. So if, could that, if that were to happen, yeah. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that would be the way that Stan Egger then can control Homelander. Because he was controlling her through his daughter and basically the Senate. Right. Now he'll have his own warrior on the floor with him. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that does happen, what kind of uh, leverage Edgar could even have over Soldier Boy to convince him to kind of be his lapdog. Because there's something about Stan Edgar where he always seems to have the power in the room, even though he's not technically, I don't know if we've been revealed. He's not super powered, right? Not he that I'm aware of. No, he hasn't actually led on to it or anything. So, um, but... yeah, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see for sure. So Cause even when he had that last scene with Homelander. When he was in that room, you're like, oh, he still has something up in his sleeve. He is not going anywhere. And uh, Jensen Ackles, the guy who portrayed Soldier Boy in the season, I thought he did a real good job. Like Phenomenal he carried a phenomenal job. Yeah. He was he was he was scary, but also like charismatic. Like he was giving me like Chris Evan vibes and he like, was the, he was that bad guy that you're scared of because he's smart. Right, yeah. That those guys that are smart and are bad are much scarier than almost Homelander, because Homelander is stupid, just and he's just strong and you know all powerful. He's stupid and paranoid. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Soldier Boy has been like literally been around the block. Like Soldier Boy has been around for you know, what seventy? Uh, I don't know, more like over like a hundred years at this yeah, point. I think. Yeah, he's been around for a while. He's been on ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now he's back on ice. But yeah, I think that I think that's going to be the arc next season. I think Stan Edgar is going to return, and he's going to bring Soldier Boy back and put him in the seven. God, who's even left in the seven? Like, I'm taking a look at the seven here in the in the graphic below. Starlight's not there anymore. The Deep is still there, but sniffling. Maeve, I think, is gone. Maeve I, is I, gone, I, yeah. I would prefer not to see Maeve again, honestly. I just want to see her right off into the sunset. Um, Black Noir is dead. Could potentially come back as m- maybe somebody else. I don't know. We do have A-Train, but A-Train, how on board is he with the seven? You know yeah. what I mean? Like He's kind then, of on the outskirts. And then, you know, the Invisible Man, which, you know, is... He he's, took some dynamite off the anus, son. Yeah, yeah, he's one. been gone for a while. Um, but I, I'd be interested in seeing how they try to rebuild the seven, or if they do at all. Like, was this an endpoint this season for the seven as a whole, as a unit? I think it depends on who's running vault. Yeah, if it's going to be Homelander, there, there is no seven. There's him, then anybody that winds up on the team. Right. If Stan Egger comes back, they're going to wind up filling it all because they need to sell stock. They need to sell you know, shares, they need to make money. And if they're not there to make the money, that company goes under and Homelander doesn't have an idea on how that truly works. Uh, well, either way, I mean, we're definitely going to get a season four. This is like the crown jewel of Amazon prime so far. Anyway, we do have Lord of the Rings coming up. Yes. Uh, so we'll see how long that well, this lasts. Is set, but... Well, this is setting the bar high for Lord of the Rings, but Lord of the Rings and this are two completely different oh, yeah. shows. Yeah. Totally different vibes. Yeah. So as long as if we can get the writing and the quality, from the boys in the new Lord of the Rings show, we're good. <laughs> yeah. Because that's one thing. I mean, buried amongst all the, you know, the the sexuality, the, the violence, the, violence, the, gore, the yeah. gore, all that. The writing for this show is top notch. Yeah, really. And, that, really and that's what brings people back. It, it's, it's it's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, 
just to, like one more thing. I we didn't really mention the Kamiko and Frenchie stuff was even good too. I mean, it was kind of took a backseat to a lot of other stuff, but they had a really great art. Like I'm rooting for them. I s- think I mentioned last time that they're almost the, the most normal ones of the group, even though they are not really normal themselves. Yeah, he, he's taking orders from a crackhead or something. Yeah, like that. <laughs> but he even like he stood his ground against you uh, against not Huey against Butcher too. He was like, you know, no Butcher, you're not going to call the shots. How do you think Butcher is? Because at the end of the show. Um, Annie is now in the seven, you know, with, and, you know, uh, mother's milk says this is a democracy now. And that's when, uh, butcher comes in and, and normally it would be butcher running the whole show yeah. um, and telling everybody else what to do. Butcher didn't really say anything because he, he didn't inter- fight that. But then right when he walked in though, then you get news that, that, uh, the head that Senator. Yeah. Yeah. She's actually the vo- running for the vice presidency spot now. Because yeah. the deep drowned the vice president candidate. And you know she's just one pop away from being the president. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, I didn't even think that. Once the you know, once they go ahead and they uh you know they win, they're sitting in there and boom. Yeah, and then so that re energizes Butcher to really be like, Okay, well now we have a new enemy besides Homelander uh to take care of. Yeah. We gotta take her down. And it's almost like why is his attention now taken away from homelander his goal is not complete his mission's not complete neither is mm's his mission is not complete both of their you know two that they want to take out are still there like we don't know they don't know where mm-hmm. soldier boy is probably but right. homelander's still alive i don't know if it detracts his mission from or takes away from his mission for you know getting revenge on homelander at all i think it's just an, an additional mission like now more than ever it's more mission critical because now they're like in the government like they're not only you know their little corporate corporate powerfulness and you know having commercials done and you know that kind of thing but now they're like infiltrated the u.s government as a a whole yeah (laughs) and uh they're really going to take over so i think feel like it's even given him more direction of more energy to be like continue his mission that was a really interesting way they ended the show yeah it was with that that was like i was like wow okay here we go. It's like they're setting up. They set up a few different storylines for season three. So it's uh, season four. Like I, yeah. I'm already, I'm already like, okay, I need some announcements. Let me know when, when, how long do we got to wait? For I know. Next? That's the thing with all these streaming shows. You don't know. It could be like two, two and a half years between seasons, which sucks. <laughs> I don't think they made us wait that long between season one, two, and now three. So I think we're going to get it within a year's time or so. Uh, this one here was a little bit longer just because of the lockdown the yeah. pandemic and everything. I think we're going to get the next one within a year's time. Yeah, and we'll definitely be talking about it. Uh, we wanted to f- uh, cover the show in full uh, when it was coming out, but they released a lot of episodes up front, and it just didn't end up working out. But, uh, you know, Amazon's becoming notor- notorious that, for that right now. It's, um, it's so much so, in fact, that it's kind of shaping the way that we uh, cover shows going forward. We used to dedicate entire after shows to just one show, and we would cover that week to week to week like the, the stuff on Disney plus and Ted Lasso and such uh, from now, if you're going to join us on our station uh, or on our channel on YouTube, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be covering and then a lot of stuff on our after shows in particular, may be broken up a bit. So we may have a, an after show where we, we go live and we talk about, you know, the new Lord of the Rings or Sandman or um, all kinds of other shows that are coming out here in the next couple of months. So be sure to stay tuned about uh, for that. There we go. And, and if you guys haven't already, I mean, you guys, uh, more likely they've heard me say this once already. Go ahead and like, subscribe, share this to other people. If they like the boys and they haven't heard us yet, you know, share it, let them know well, our opinions on it. And uh, we love new viewers. Uh, like I said, all our stuff over in TikTok. Yeah. There's a bad that's blowing up on us. Our you know, our 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 Twitter tweeter thingy. Uh <laughs> <laughs> the Twitter, the Twitter, the TikTok, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 those two things. Uh YouTube shorts. If you don't even like long form. Go to where you, I mean, we've been putting, I've been putting out a lot of YouTube shorts and it's really just clips of, you know, the shows and this uh, fun mashup of the, the boys, Star Wars. I mean, I, I got to figure out what we're doing next, but it, it's basically seven days of one, uh, one type and just keep moving forward. But uh, uh, I think that's a good spot. What do you think? Go ahead and end it. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say so. Okay. Well, I guess until we see you guys next time, go ahead and uh, keep it cheesy. See ya.